Well, welcome back to Mr. Obsolete's Vintage Homesteading Channel. Today's video is going to be two parts. The first part is going to be vintage chainsaw BS, and the second half will be removing distressed trees. So, today we're going to talk about our little partner S55 here. We've had it running in other videos and whatnot, but it's a 1979. 55cc it's a homeowner saw and uh, even though it says <clears throat> homeowner saw it's rated at 3.4 horsepower which is quite good especially for a vintage saw the lineage of this particular model goes back to 1979 from 79 back to 1967 and they made them till 1988 when they went out of business this particular model what sets it apart from the so-called professional model. It says semi-pro here. The decal is mostly missing, but several things. One, it does not have a chain break on it. There's no place for it. The chain is a 3 8 but it's a low-profile chain, which, when you're cutting, doesn't have much of a chance of kicking back like a more full-size chain does. Then the other thing, just to cut the price on it to make it for the homeowners, is the clutch on it. Uh, they just did a few things to cheapen them up, like I say, no clutch brake. And the clutch on it only has two friction shoes on it, and then the higher end version of the same saw has a three, three parts to the clutch shoes, and it had a chain brake on it and stuff. But some of the features it's your kill switch. That's your choke. It's got a throttle lock right here for starting. It has a small dog on it. If it were a pro saw, so I would have a lot bigger dog on it. And they have a muffler plate here. You can actually take it off and turn it so the exhaust will go this way or this way. And I bought this off from Craigslist for 25 bucks and came with a bunch of chains and stuff, which is in a prior video but the only thing I had to really do to it was clean it thoroughly I took the muffler off and removed a little bit of carbon out of the exhaust didn't have much in it so it hasn't had a whole lot of use and um, cleaned the spark plug I cleaned the carburetor and I've run it quite a bit but the diaphragm was starting to suffer failure from the bad fuel so I had to rebuild the carburetor recently but other than that <clears throat> a nice little saw has a 20 inch bar and has a weighs 17 and 3 quarter pounds with the bar and chain on it. It's heavier than new saws, but it's, this saw was very advanced when it first came out in 1967. It was much more advanced than the Huskies and the Stills and anything else. And the reason these saws didn't sell really good, they were expensive, and uh, that time the market was chock full of a bunch of different brands. Today we only have just a handful left. But anyway, so we'll go out and we'll see at the trees. Okay, we're down at the trees here. This tree here is the one we're going to take out first. You can see it's leaning off to the side. If you go up, you can see that the top had blown out of it. Here a couple of years back. It's grown some small branches but it's pretty well done for and so we'll get the saw going and cut that one down what I'm going to do I'm not going to wedge it I'm just going to cut it off at the base when it gets over so far I'll just push it over and get our eyes and ears on here Okay, well, we're back at another tree. The common denominator in the trees in this little area here, they all suffer from 
two things, tops blown out of them, and root rot. This one is slowly tipping over backwards that way. And if you look up the branches here, almost two thirds of the way up, the branches are all dead and have moss on them at the very top. There's just a few little branches that are get foliage on them, but the tree's pretty well done for. And then this one, the same thing. You go up and you can see that the top is blown out of it a couple of times and just a little bit of new stuff in it. So what we're going to do is to take it down, since it's leaning in that direction, I'll do a face cut here. And I'll come back and do my back cut here, but I'll have to do a bore cut to get through here. And that'll get the cut, primary cut to drop it because the weight's on it this way. But on this side, it'll also give me the start of a cut for the front cut there. Face cut. And it's leaning back, so I'm not sure if I'm going to try dropping that today or not, but we'll take this first half off here. So get my ears on here. You can see when I started to cut the saw is trying to kick out. That's very dangerous. So you have to calculate how much energy you're going to put into it to get the cut started and then go in. And on the saw, when it's revving full out at 8500, sounds like it's misfiring. And it actually is because the carburetor has a built-in governor <clears throat> that richens the mixture so it keeps it from blowing up. And then when it's under load, Runs really perfect and cuts it right off. So, okay, just a quick summary on the chainsaw BS. A saw like this, it's in re relatively good shape like this. I can use it because I can repair it and search for pieces and stuff, but for the average guy, it's not really the answer, even if you can buy it cheap, because if you have to take it to a shop to get it repaired, they're gonna take your hand and walk you to the front door and throw you out. Most saw, saw shops today are not really good shops. They just want to sell you a new saw. 
you need to go to someone who's a true mechanic and is patient with you to find the parts and stuff. But the second thing that's bad about these saws is 88 was the last year they made them and there's not much in the way of parts for them. So if this thing needed some repairs of any extent, it'd just be a wall hanger. But the things I like about it, it's got really good power. It's reasonably light, has really good balance. And uh, it's easy to roll it over in your fuel and in your oil tanks down here. One bad feature I don't like on this saw, uh, it doesn't have an adjustable oiler for the bar, but the factory setting is pretty good because I've used it quite a bit and uh, rarely have to adjust the chain so it's pumping out enough oil. It's designed so that you'll have about a quarter tank of oil left over when you run out of fuel or get low on fuel. So that's good. That way you're not running a hot bar and burning up your bar and chain. So there you are. Vintage Partner Chainsaw BS. So that'll be it for today. See you on the next video.